Okay guys, so this is the second video in Unit 5. It is, again, a mathematically intense um, unit, uh, but we are going to be working on uh, the mole and then how to convert between grams and moles and then how you go from grams to molecules or grams to atoms. And it's um, not too bad, but you know, we're going to really focus on the different steps here and try and really get some good practice in. Now, remember in the atomic mass video, we said that carbon-12 is the standard for mass. It's assumed to have that mass of 12 AMU, and that's great. Do you guys, I mean, do you have any idea how small an atomic mass unit is? I mean, like, just, who cares? That's not how we focus on things. We want things to be large. We want to be able to see them. And if you think back to unit one, we said, you know, we deal with the macroscopic. You know, it's great that we're talking about molecules of water, but we want to talk about what we can see. And so we can't talk about 12 AMUs. We can't talk, talk about something that we really can't see or study. And so we want to deal with a larger quantity. Now, for us, what we do is we looked at the number of items necessary to make a sample of carbon-12, just carbon-12, no other isotopes, weigh exactly 12 grams. Now, 12 grams is pretty manageable. Um, when you buy a little packs of pencil lead, uh, that is 12 grams. It's 12 grams of carbon. It's graphite. I don't know why we call it lead. It's, it's carbon. Um, and so it's a little bit more manageable. It's still small quantities, but it's still, it, you can see it. Okay? So a mole is the exact number of atoms needed to make 12 grams of carbon. Now, I'm not going to get into the experiments that determined this. But it turns out that the number of atoms needed to make that sample is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, that is Avogadro's number. I mean, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Yes. Um... Wow, my eyes are really messing up today. Something like that. That's a lot of atoms. Now, it doesn't really matter to me um, if you want to write this out or not. I would always do this just because um, that's easier. Now, there are two ways to enter this number in your calculator. You can either type it in as 6.022 times 10 caret 23 or 6.022 it's either going to be e or ee -E depending on your depending on your calculator e23 um, either way works if you really want you can put it all in parentheses which is not a bad idea at all so so 12 grams of carbon 12 is going to be one mole which has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms okay now Guys, a lot of the time people hear this number and they get kind of upset, like, you know, what on earth does that mean? It's the same as a dozen. If I said a dozen cars, it means 12. If I say a dozen eggs, it means 12 eggs. If I say a dozen papers to grade, it means I have 12 papers to grade. A dozen is just a number. It's unitless. This is the same concept. Avogadro's number is a unitless quantity. It is just a number. So it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's, um, and you know, it's, it is what it is. And so if we're talking about atoms, it would be atoms. If we're talking about molecules, it's going to be a molecule. And so if we were talking about airplanes, it would be a mole of airplanes. You know, it, it's, it's going to have the unit of whatever we're talking about. Now again, this is typically kind of hard to visualize, and so I have a couple of things here for you. Um, is he going to let me do it? 
maybe. Okay, so I wanted to make sure this would open. Um, th if you pull up the mole concept map, I'm not, I, I mean, I'm sorry, the mole analogies, I'm not going to go through all of these, but I kind of wanted to pull out a few that really help visualize this. And so, um, where's the one with marshmallows? There it is. A mole of marshmallows, you know, the little tiny marshmallows that are so harmless would cover the U.S. to a depth of 6,500 miles, which is really, really, really deep. Um, an Avogadro's number, a mole of pennies, distributed over everybody on Earth. Now, this is a few years ago, but still, um, it's not going to really be different now. If you distributed all those pennies to every man, woman, and child, there'd be enough money to spend a million dollars every hour, day and night, for the rest of their lives, and still have, have over half left unspent at death. It's a huge number. Um, <laughs> one mole of marbles would form a mountain 116 times higher than Mount Everest. I mean, these are, these are, it's a huge number, guys. And so, no. Um, just keep that in mind as we move forward. Now, the other thing I have for you is this mole concept map. Now, I think, um, I am, I embedded in the, the lectures quite a bit because we keep adding to it. But remember, we said a second ago, 12 grams of carbon 12 is one mole. So we can actually use the molar mass or the atomic mass depending on if we're talking about an atom or a molecule. Again, it's the molar mass of an atom, the molar mass of a molecule either way um, to go from grams to moles. Um, then we can go use Avogadro's number to go between moles and other things. Is it an atom that we're talking about like sodium? Is it a molecule like NaCl? Um, and so on. And so we have this way of converting between different quantities, okay? Now don't get too, you know, distracted here. You know, we could say the same thing about, you know, a car. You could have a mole of cars and you could go between the number of cars and the number of tires. And so you have to consider the exact thing that you're talking about. So follow your units here. So if we were to look at a sample of sodium. Now sodium is um, an atom and it is um, just by itself. So we could look at the periodic table to, to find that if we need to. But we're looking for atoms. I always am going to make a plan and we're being given moles. So moles of sodium to atoms of sodium. Now can we go from moles to atoms? So I'm going to go back to my mole concept map. Now if you look, this is an atom. So I don't need to go to molecules. I can go straight to atoms because Na is already an atom. So we can go from moles to atoms using the, the, the Avogadro's number. Um, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And so we can do this in one step. So I'm going to say Avogadro's number. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now I have one step here. So I'm going to make one column. And I kind of use fractions inside here. I don't always draw my line, but that's what I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to put what I start with on the outside. 5.24 moles of sodium. Now to cancel moles, I need to bring moles down here. And so I'm going to take moles and I'm going to have one mole. 
underneath 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, because Na is an atom, of sodium. Now if we look, moles cancels. We're going to be left with units of atoms, which is what we want. And so 5.24 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is what we've got here. Now guys, um, this is where it can get kind of tricky. In your calculator, the way I would enter this is 5.24 times 6.022 E23 or 5.24 times parentheses 6.022 times 10 caret 23. Either way works, okay? Now either way, you should get the same number, but it's always a good idea to check to make sure um, because otherwise you could be disappointed on the exam. And so if you do this, you end up getting 3.16 times 10 to the 24th, or 3.16 E24. Now, the way that I typically think about this is, and I don't think that you guys have this in MOM, but I'm not sure, so I'm going to show you how it would be entered in MOM. To enter this in your homework, it would be 3.16. that asterisk, the little star thing, times 10 caret 24. And that's how you would do it there. Um, usually, I think I've got it set up a different way, but um, anyway. Now, the, the idea here, guys, is every time you solve these, make a plan. The number of arrows is going to tell you the steps. To cancel units, they go on opposite sides. So if one's on the top and you want to cancel it, it should go on the bottom. Oops. Come on. There it goes. And then before you really solve it, make sure you're checking your units. Okay. So we canceled our moles here moles canceled, we were left with atoms. So calculate the number of Na atoms in a 4.21 mole sample of sodium oxide. Now you notice guys here I'm giving you the formula. This is not going to be a double dipped exam where I test you on writing formulas and um, and this type of stuff. It's going to be only the things from this exam. So let's go ahead and make our plan. We're given moles of Na2O and we're looking for atoms of Na. Hmm. So can we do this in one step? Now this is not an atom. Na2O, there's more than one atom bonded there, so we can't go from moles to atoms because that's not an atom. Sodium oxide is a molecule, so we have to go from moles to molecules here. I'm going to do that, Na2O. Now, we're going to go from moles to atoms using Avogadro's number which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is equal to one mole. Once we have molecules, we can find the atoms of sodium. Now guys, how many atoms of sodium are in sodium oxide? Hopefully you can see that every time I have one molecule of Na2O, I have two atoms of Na. And that's because of this two right here. If we were talking about oxygen, there would be one, one atom of oxygen. But we have it going from moles to molecules using Avogadro's number. 
molecules to atoms using our formula. So we've got two arrows, so I need two columns. And I'm going to go ahead and write in what we've got. So we're going to start with what we were given, the 4.21 moles of Na2O. Now, then we have this Avogadro's number. We want to cancel moles because we're looking for atoms. So moles should go on the bottom to make sure it cancels. And one mole of anything has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is a molecule here. Um, right. And it should be Na2O, but I ran out of room. Now we know moles has canceled. We're left with molecules. And we know that every time we have one mo molecule of Na2O, it's on the bottom, so it's going to cancel. We have two atoms of Na. Okay. So molecules cancels, the moles canceled, we're left with atoms of, of sodium, which is what we wanted. And so we can go ahead and enter this in our calculator. So the way I would enter this is 4.21 times 6.022 E23, or in parentheses times 10 to the 23, times 2. And you end up getting something like 5.07 times 10 to the 24 atoms of Na. Now guys, if you need more practice with this, I have some conversions on Blackboard for you. Um, you can also just take the question I have here and change the number. Um, 8.21, I 7.52, just any number you want for moles. You could change this compound. It's probably not going to be sodium oxide on the exam. It may be carbon dioxide or it may be, um, I don't know, sky's the limit. So make sure you're comfortable going from moles to molecules, molecules to atoms, and so on. The, the best thing I can tell you guys is to use this mole concept map until you are really comfortable. Now, so far we've talked about atomic mass and we've used atomic mass in those conversions, um, but we need to uh, also look at for molecules, molar mass of a molecule. Okay. Now, if we're talking about sodium, or any element, it can come straight off the periodic table. But for compounds, you have to take into account all of the th substances here. Now, which one did I do? No. So for example, for NaCl, atom, number, mass, and total. You know I like my tables. For NaCl, we have sodium and chlorine. There's just one of each here. The molar mass of sodium is 22.99 from the periodic table. Uh, chlorine is 35.45. I usually go to two decimal places here. That's usually going to give you more than enough numbers to be accurate. One sodium with a mass of 22 gives us a total mass of sodium of 22.99. 22.99, I don't know why I said the other. 1 times 35.45 is 35.45. That's the total for chlorine. And if we add them together, we get 58.44 grams per mole of NaCl. We could do the same thing with water. Atom, number, mass, and total. For water, which is H2O, we have hydrogen and oxygen. There's two hydrogens and one oxygen. The mass of hydrogen is 1.01. For oxygen, it's 16. 2 times 1.01 .01 is 2.02. One times 16 is 16. So total, our mass is 18.02 grams.
grams per mole. Okay. Now let's look at why it is that we don't want to deal with the mass of a single atom. So let's calculate the mass of an atom of iron. Now iron on the periodic table has the um, has the atomic mass, the molar mass of 55.85. Now what we're looking for is the grams per atom. Okay, so we have grams per mole and we want grams per atom. I'm making my plan down here because I I'm, got kind of greedy in space. So grams is fine, but we want to cancel moles. Moles is on the bottom. We want to get to atoms. Well, how do we go between moles and atoms? Iron is an atom, so we can do just moles to atoms. We don't have to do molecules. Anytime you want to go from moles to atoms, you have to use Avogadro's number which says there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms in this case because we're talking about atoms in one mole. Okay. So now we've got our arrow. We know that we need one step here. I'm going to do it over here just to 55.85 grams of iron and one mole. We have one arrow, so we have one, one step. To cancel moles, we're going to put one mole up here. And one mole of anything has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd something here. We're talking about atoms, so it's going to be atoms. So moles cancels. We're left here, 55.85. If you wanted to, you can multiply by one, but you don't need to. Divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Guys, when you are not smarter than your calculator, you are going to get the wrong exponent here. The way that you want to enter this in your calculator is either 55.85 divided by 6.022 so notice the parentheses times 10 to the 23rd or 55.85 divided by 6.022 E23 either way should give you the right answer. Now guys, you're going to know that you're right primarily just by checking um, your answers with mine, but 55.85 divided by however you entered it, you should get something to a negative exponent. Here it's going to be 9.27 times 10 to the negative 23. Moles cancelled, so now we're at grams over atoms and iron is over there. Okay. Calculate the number of atoms in 3.20 grams of carbon. So here we've got grams of carbon and we're looking for atoms. We can't go from grams to atoms. It's just not possible. Come on, go back to the concept. There he is can't do that. You have to go first to moles and then to atoms. So it's going to be a two-step process here. So we're going to go from grams to moles and then from moles because this is a atom it's not a molecule of light CO2 we can go to straight to atoms. Okay. Anytime you go from grams to moles, you need your molar mass. On the periodic table, there's 12.01 grams of carbon and one mole. 
and here we're going to use Avogadro's number which says that there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd here it's going to be atoms in one mole so we have two steps here we have two arrows so two steps so I make my two columns we're going to write what we start with out here to the left 3.20 grams of carbon to cancel carbon I mean, I'm sorry no to cancel grams of the carbon we're going to pick grams of carbon down here and that's with the 12.01 that we got from the periodic table underneath one mole now one mole of anything to cancel it I'm going to put it down here but one mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms well this is an atom so it's going to be atom it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd so checking our units grams cancels moles cancels we're left with uh, atoms of carbon which is good so in your calculator you have 3.20 times 6.022 to the 23rd and then divided by 12.01 and you end up getting something like 1.60 times 10 to the 23rd and again if you had to enter this in um, blackboard this is how it would look if you have to enter it in your homework quizzes it would be 1.60 asterisk star whatever um, times 10 caret which is shift 6 23 like that so calculate the number of atoms in uh, excuse me the number of hydrogen atoms in a 6.91 gram sample of water this is like the accumulation of everything that we've just done this is the longest problem I could possibly give you. Here we have grams of hydrogen. I mean, I'm sorry, grams of water. Grams of water is what we're given. And we're looking for hydrogen atoms. The first thing you want to ever do is go to moles. What do you do? Go to moles! Just, just go to moles. Just trust me. Just always go to moles. You can't do anything with grams you just you always need moles so here we're gonna use molar mass now thankfully we solved this a second ago and we found that the molar mass of water is 18.02 so there's 18.02 grams H2O and one mole now from moles we can't go to atoms because water is not an atom it is a molecule so we have to go to molecules here and that is going to be using Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is equal to one mole and from molecules of water we can get to atoms of hydrogen and we can use that with the formula because every water has how many hydrogens two so okay so now just to kind of um, show you what I'm talking about we have grams of water we're going to moles then we have to go to molecules and finally we can get to atoms um, and so this is a three-step process There we go. So one, two, three arrows. So I need three columns here. So we're going to put what we're given, the 6.91 grams of water out here. According to the table we made a little while ago, we know that there's 18.02 grams of water and one mole of water. According to Avogadro's number, if we want to put we're going to put moles on the bottom so that it cancels but according to Avogadro's number we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in this sample 
to cancel molecules, we're going to put one molecule of water down here. And we know every time we have a molecule of water, we have two atoms of hydrogen. So grams cancels, moles is on the top and bottom, so it cancels. Molecules is on the top and bottom, so it cancels. We're left with units of atoms of hydrogen, which is good. So this looks good. Um, now, that gives us 6.91 times 6.022 to the 23rd times 2. And then we're going to divide by things on the bottom, so divided by 18.02. I typically leave the ones off. Um, if you want to, you can multiply by one, divide by one. It's up to you. Um, it's not going to change anything. So we get 4.62 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. Okay. Now, guys, the reason I say that this is the most challenging question, period, is if you look, we had to find the molar mass here. It wasn't just on the periodic table. And then there's three columns. That is a really, really long step. Um, I typically like your exam questions to be two to three, period. So if I were to ask you this, I'd have given you this molar mass um, and the formula. And so I would have given you this as well. And so you would just be plugging in the molar mass, Avogadro's number, and that formula just to kind of make sure um, you've set it up right. I wouldn't want to test you on more than one objective here. So we have 100 gram samples of potassium and copper. Which one has the greatest number of um, uh, of atoms? Now go ahead guys and pause here because um, you want to try this on your own first. It's going to really set you up for success. But grams to atoms, I'm going to give myself more room. K and copper. These are already atoms, so we're going to go from grams to moles. And then from moles, we can go directly to atoms. We don't have to worry about molecules and then atoms. So grams to moles, we're going to use the molar mass from the periodic table. Moles to atoms, we're going to use Avogadro's number. Now because of space, I'm not going to write those numbers in, but um, the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, we're going to use it a lot. So let's start with K first. We've got a two-step process here. So I've got my two columns, 100 grams of K. According to the periodic table, 39.10 grams of K is in one mole of K. And then one mole of K has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of K. Grams is canceled, moles is canceled, we're left with atoms, which is what we want. So we have 100 times 6.022 e to the 2030 uh, divided by 39.10. This gives us 1.54 times 10 to the 24th, or e24, either way is fine. Okay, so let's do it for copper. Copper is more orange, so we're going to do orange. Copper is 100 grams, is what we were given. Still a two-step process. On the periodic table, though, copper has a mass of 63.55. We're going to round. And one mole. And then one mole of anything has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And here we're talking about an atom of copper, so it's going to be atoms of copper. 
So grams of copper, moles of copper is canceled. We're left with um, atoms of copper, which is what we want. And so we have 100 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 63.55, which is 9.48 times 10 to the 23rd. Now the question says, which has the greatest number of atoms? And I did these two intentionally. Because if you're not paying attention, you might say that copper has the wrong, uh, right, the uh, most atoms, but it's wrong. The one that is bigger is actually the potassium. And I should have had my units here. That's a bad girl. Because look at the exponents. This one is larger. So it's like comparing 15 to 9. 15 is larger. So potassium has the higher number of atoms here. Okay? And so with that being said, um, just make sure you're considering the whole number. So here we have 50 gram samples of water and dinitrogen monoxide. Which sample has the greatest number of oxygen atoms? Again, guys, take some time, pause this, and see if you can get there, okay? It's just trying to set you up so that you're comfortable right before I go through it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a plan. We have grams and we're looking for atoms of oxygen. We can go from grams to moles using our molar mass. We cannot go from moles to atoms here. It's not going to work. Um, these are molecules, so we have to go from moles to molecules using Avogadro's number. And then from molecules we can get to atoms using um, the formula. Okay. Now here's a problem with this. We don't actually have the molar masses of, well actually we do, we did th this one a few minutes ago, um, but let's go ahead and do uh, dinitrogen monoxide. So atom number, mass in total, we have nitrogen and oxygen. There's two nitrogens, one oxygen. On the periodic table, the molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01. Um, I always do two decimal places. I don't know like why, it just, it, it works. Oxygen is 16.00. This gives us 28.02 and 16.00, or a total mass of 44.01. Uh, grams per mole. Okay, so the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole. Molar mass of dinitrogen monoxide is 44.02 grams per mole. Okay, so we've got our molar masses, we have Avogadro's number memorized, and we have our formula. So we can go ahead and set these up. Um, let's do blue. So I need have three arrows, I need three steps, and I'm going to start with that 50 grams that was given, and I'm going to do water first. Now we know there's 18.02 grams in one mole of water. To cancel moles, I'm going to put one mole down here, and the 6.022 goes up here. Because water is a molecule, this is molecules. To cancel molecules, I'm going to put one molecule of water down here. And every time I have one molecule, I have one atom of oxygen. So in our um, calculator, we would enter 50 times 6.022 
e to the 23. If you do times 10 to the 23, make sure you're using your parentheses. Um, times 1 if you want, but then divided by 18.02. Just double check, grams cancels, moles cancels, molecules cancels, we're good. So we end up getting 1.67 times 10 to the 24th atoms of oxygen. Okay, so let's do the same thing with uh, dinitrogen monoxide. So we're starting with 50 grams. Here the molar mass that we calculated was 44.02 grams in one mole. Oops. And then to cancel moles, one mole of N2O is going to come down here. And the 6.022 times 10 to the 23 goes up top. Dinitrogen monoxide is a molecule, so this is a molecule. And then every molecule of N2O has one atom of oxygen. If I had been a little bit more creative, it wouldn't have been a one-to-one -one for each, but that's okay. So in your calculator, you have 50 times 6.022 to the 23rd, um, or E23, divided by 44.02. And you should get 6.84 times 10 to the 23 atoms of oxygen. Now again, I chose this example specifically because <coughs> sorry, um, it says which one has the greater number of oxygen and sometimes you want to go and say the bigger coefficient but the coefficient does not matter as much as your exponent here and so you want to make sure you're saying either the thing with the bigger exponent or the larger number this is just like on the last slide where we're comparing 16 to 6 because this exponent is bigger it's actually larger okay so anytime you're doing a mole conversion, make sure you are um, preparing for, <sighs> make your plan, okay? Um, look at what's given, look at where you're going, and consider what units you're going to need to cancel. And really guys, use this mole concept map for as long as you need. Um, you won't get it on the exam, but really there's so much practice on Blackboard that isn't graded. Um, I think it's going to be... I think you'll get comfortable with it.